Hello, everybody. You're listening to Procure Smarter by Dr. Sharon Cook, brought to you by Procure Smart. Procure Smart is a boutique purchasing agency specializing in hospitality and multifamily units. We are small but mighty and can offer competitive rates on your project. We work with projects of all sizes and all budgets. Check out our website and reach out to us. We would love to hear from you. Today's guest is Bracken Sansbury of the Art and Light Gallery in Greenville, South Carolina. Stay tuned for that. But first, we're going to talk a little bit about purchasing negotiations. I believe that negotiations is a partnership. It is not a winner-take-all kind of relationship. And it is much more than how much will you pay. Significant time and effort is needed to prepare for a negotiation session especially as the significance of the outcome increases. And it begins with careful attention to the question, what exactly are your objectives? Understanding what is most important to you for this negotiation is imperative. And that really comes down to price, time, and quality. If you have time, you can get a better price. If you do not have time on your side, then you should be prepared to negotiate the price. At Procure Smart, we will handle these challenges for you. We work with suppliers all around the globe to get you the best price, the best quality. And even in this day and age, we work to try to get you the best lead times. If you have a project you're working on, reach out to us. Check out our website at www.procuresmartco.com. Now let's talk to Bracken Sansbury of Art and Light Gallery. Well, thanks for doing this. First of all, I want you to introduce yourself and tell me about Art and Light Gallery. Sure. Um, Well, I'm Bracken Sansbury and I'm the gallery director at Art and Light Gallery. Uh, Art and Light is a gallery in Greenville, South Carolina that has been around for 15 years last month. So Um, August is our birthday and 15 years. It was a big one five. I've been part of the gallery for four and a half years at this point, but worked in a number of galleries before moving to Greenville and connecting with Teresa, the owner of Art and Light. Right. Um, Teresa Roche is the owner, right? Teresa Roche is the owner. She is an artist and a textile designer and she is a Greenville, South Carolina girl born and bred. And Art and Light is, when it started, it was an homage to the artists and the creatives here in Greenville. And as we've grown, we've expanded outside of just Greenville, though we still represent a lot of really incredible local artists. We have a a whole range of artworks. We have emerging artist price points on up to those that are regularly collected, established artists. And um, all of our artists are very different. No two are the same, and we like to keep it that way. And is there a particular type of art that the gallery specializes in? Well, it's all contemporary fine art. So everything that we have is going to be by artists that are really honing a craft. A lot of them are trained. They went to school for art. Um, Some of them are self-taught, but they are all creating archival quality works of art um, in a more contemporary capacity. So we don't have a lot of your traditional still lives and things like that. It's um, very contemporary, very colorful, very bright, uh, lots of lots of exciting work, we would like to say. Right. And is there like a rotation that the art and the artists are in? Like how often does your art change in the gallery? Sure. So we represent over 40 different artists on our gallery roster, which is a lot of artists. A lot, yeah. Yeah, and we also have an online-only space where we represent, at this point, four artists, but we're, you know, as it catches on, we're going to grow that a little bit, and those are all artists that we absolutely love and think people need to know about. We just don't have physical space in the gallery to bring them on board, so we have a relationship with them. We have access to their studios, and any of the work that's in their studio gets shipped directly to the client or to the gallery, depending on where the client is, so um, all in all, we've got about 50 artists really on, on our roster and um, we rotate out 
exhibitions monthly. So we have one room in the gallery that's dedicated to exhibition space and that changes every single month. December is our anomaly month. That's more or less a pop-up month because it's such a great gift giving time of year. So every weekend we do something different. Um, other than that, work rotates in as art artists have new work, as art sells. We have to replace the things that are on the walls. Um, if an artist is creating a new body of work that we want to bring in, or they have, you know, 16 new pieces, we'll maybe choose five and send two older ones back and rotate in some new stuff. So that's forever changing. Yeah. All right. So if you um, are in Greenville or you will be visiting Greenville, what's the address of the gallery? It's 16 Aiken Street, and that is Greenville, 29611. And we are located in the village of West Greenville, which has been donned the arts center or arts neighborhood of Greenville. And so there are a lot of artist studios in the area, a lot of really cool uh, locally owned restaurants, really cool shops. There's a couple of great clothing stores that are, again, are locally run. There's even a, a fashion designer or two in the village that you can find some really unique one-of-a-kind pieces of wearable art. Um, so it's a cool little place to visit. That's great. Okay, so let's talk about how you and I met. Sure. So for anybody who does not know, I met Bracken, um, um, I guess, almost two years ago. It's and probably been uh, about two years now. Yeah, I believe it's been almost two years. Um, and I was looking for some help for the AC Greenville project. Um, and that is an Oro Hotels project. And I was their director of purchasing when um, that project was being built. And the owner had come to me and said, hey, we we want to put all local art in the hotel and we want to have about 100 pieces. And um, I just was just did not even know where to begin that process. And um, I met Bracken. And I, honest to goodness, I don't remember how we met. Do you remember? I definitely remember. Okay, so, tell me. <laughs> I had been in a couple of different galleries before that had worked with hospitality or uh, healthcare, larger scale art projects that involve prints and that sort of thing. And I knew that Oro was going to be bringing the AC hotel to Greenville. So I reached out to you, uh, well, to, I, I don't even remember actually who it was, but I, I think it was through Eva Miguel Oliver, one of our artists, I was connected to somebody in the Oro group and I emailed Oro and I didn't hear anything. And then I heard from one of my artists that I represent and I manage her, her projects in the Greenville and surrounding areas, Katie Walker. And she was like, I can't do this. I, I don't manage this stuff. You're my representation. Can you connect with this lady? And I was like, yeah, I've been trying to. <laughs> perfect. And so, um, it was a perfect kind of like storm cloud of connecting and, um, you guys had reached out to the Metropolitan Arts Council right? and they had given you a whole list of local artists. And so you guys had chosen a selection of artists and reached out to them independent of working with a consultant. And then I connected with you and you were like, oh yeah, let's get together and talk. And so we did. And then the rest is history. <laughs> right. Okay. So yes, I'm so glad your memory is so much better than mine. Um, <laughs> You know, at the time I had met Alan Etheridge and he, mm -hmm. he said, I'm going to send you a bunch of profiles for local artists. He inundated me with about 150 of them. There are so many good artists in Greenville. I mean, like, it was so, so many. Bracken, it was so hard to narrow that list down. <laughs> I and get this it. Day, I'm not sure I did a great job because there's so many great ones out there. We just, we just could have um, had more space in the hotel and just could have added everybody. We really could have. I cannot <laughs> wait to do another hotel and have to do commissioned art. So anyways, oh, yeah. we had like 150 artists, myself and another lady that was on my team at the time. We kind of sat down and we just started picking out those artists that we thought really fit that European flair that the AC was going for. Um, and it was tough. It was hard. I think we got down to 75. And then that's when you came into the picture. Thank God you came into the picture. 
um, because we had to get that list down to, I think we were down to like 49, maybe. That sounds about right. That does sound about right. And then um, the project just kept growing and growing and growing. And I think at the, at the end, uh, I don't even remember now how many artists we had in there. And I think we stopped buying at about 120 pieces. Yes. Yeah, so it was a massive project. So let, when, let me ask you, I, I remember coming to your studio. Um, you were, you and Teresa were so lovely. <laughs> I love the studio. And you said to me, I just don't think this is my, our kind of niche. Well, yeah. So again, like I had done a lot of these bigger projects at other galleries and consultancies I'd worked with. But the thing that was so different about this is you guys had already connected with the artist. Usually I'm the one to bring the artist to the table and say, this is, this is what's going to be great in the space based on what your designers have put together based on the sizes that you have. I think that this room needs this many and then this, these three artists are great for this space. And then we kind of whittle it down from there. But in this situation, you guys had chosen almost 50 different local Greenville artists, many of which I worked with and even represent at the gallery, but even more artists that I had never worked with before. And so as a consultant or you know, a gallerist, it's important to have a really great relationship with my artists because they're my partner. Like I know how they work. I know what their cap capacity is. I know the sizes they work in, how they run their commissions, if they're even possible to do commissions. So that relationship is wildly important to me being able to manage a project of this scale. And so coming into this, I was like, oh my God, like what if in and again, artists are amazing, but they're also tricky to work with sometimes because they have very specific ways that they work and they're all different. And so um, coming into this, I was like, oh my gosh, there are like 30 artists that I've never, ever had a relationship with. How are they going to trust me? How are they going to know that I've got their back? How are they going to know that I'm like working for them with them to make this the best possible project ever? So that that's what gave me pause at the beginning. Right. Well, and listen. It was a huge learning curve for me. I, I learned, you taught me so much about the world of art, oh. about local art, commissioned art. Like I have been buying prints and, and some, and some commission art, but nothing to the scale my entire career. And I learned yeah. so much from you. Well, that means a lot. <laughs> well, so one of the things that I learned was the value of pricing art. Like, you know, like dealing with this many artists, I think we were over 50, 50 artists that we were dealing with. Everybody mm -hmm. had like a different scale of, of, of monetary, like how they were pricing their art. And you really came out not in a good way, in a loving way. You came at me and you were like, listen, this is a whole different world out here. You know, we're, we're dealing with very fragile egos and we're dealing with how well is the artist known? Like talk about all of those things you have to consider when you're dealing with a commissioned piece of art. Sure. So again, when you're working on a larger scale with hospitality or healthcare or a giant conglomerate office space, you are sourcing prints just because it's most mostly cost effective. Buying original art's not cheap and it shouldn't be because you're paying an artist for the years that they have worked, the education that they have spent money on, the the time in the studio, the fails and the wins and the all of the in-between. And we worked with everybody from emerging Greenville artists that like have only showed on their own during open studios to somebody who is literally traded on the secondary market in Asia. So that's a whole range of artists that you're working with. And price points obviously are reflected in that. And artists is traded on the secondary market is going to be a much higher price point than somebody who's just getting their footing and figuring out who they are. And so we had a lot of middle ground artists that are career artists um, that lean in that emerging to establish category. We had a couple that are on that higher end of the spectrum. And then we had quite a few that are, were on the lower end of that spectrum. And so there was a whole range. And that's, that's hard to wrap your head around if you're not in the art world and you're used to buying prints. Because right. You get a print for, you know, like 
$75 plus framing for something that goes in a hotel room most of the time, right? And then original art is gonna be well beyond that. Like, I don't know any original artists that are gonna create a 24 by 24 inch work that's original, a one of a kind that's gonna be for $75. <laughs> so um, we, had to, we had to work through all of that. And it was a lot of fun because you were excited to learn about that process too. And I thought that was really cool. Like you didn't just like put your foot down and you're like, no, I'm only gonna spend X amount on art period. You were very open. You realized that for this project to be special and this project to be one that people are literally going to talk about for years, you had to spend the money and you had to like get Oro to understand and see the value in that. And not only that, you're feeding into your community, you're feeding into our local economy, you're supporting, you know, a local consultancy gallery like us, but then you're also supporting almost 50 different artists. Right. And we had so much, um, so much love from the artists. We, our, our uh, at least it seemed to me, our artists were so excited to be a part of this project. Mm -hmm. They absolutely were. They were pumped. And, you know, there were, there were a couple of occasions where we were commissioning, you know, maybe 10 pieces from one artist. And so we were able to talk to them a little bit about, you know, what we can do to make it more cost effective. But at the end of the day, you guys did a great job of believing in the art, believing in the value of the art, because the art does have a value and you can't really, you can't shirk that. Like it has to have that value or else you're undercutting anybody who's ever bought anything before from that artist and that right. artist, um, the value of the work, it's huge. And um, I just applaud you guys for being so open to that. And honestly, I have to say, we have had a couple of art consultants, like big time art consultants that work on these huge, huge projects out of big cities, contact us and our artists asking if they can license their work for specific projects because they saw how cool it was in the AC. Oh, and really? Time, yes. And every time I get that email, I'm like, well, the reason why this was such a killer project is because it was original. Like none of these artists have licensed their work. Oh, I love <laughs> so, hearing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's amazing because I'm hoping that like, because of this project, it's going to help push other hoteliers, other people that are um, helping make their brand better, understand that investing in original art is actually worth it. And the, I mean, it really is like it shines and prints are not going to shine the way that investing in original art does. And of course you can't put original art in every single guest room. We know it's hospitality. We know that they're not going to be safe there, but in a lot of the public spaces, they're going to be fine and it's totally worth it. I will say this project um, really lit a fire under me for the love of commissioned art. Like okay. I, I look at it differently. I, I lust after it differently. I, you know, like <laughs> when I look at a piece before I was like, Oh, I don't know, but that's a lot of money. And now I look at it with a different eye and it's like, okay, but is what's the value in that? Like, will it, will it increase in value? Like, and, and really for me, it really comes down to, do I just really want to have it? So yeah. I, I, you know, I, I don't really think of it for my personal self the financial side more as the emotional side. I think that most like personal collectors, that is how they buy. Most of my day-to-day -day clients, they're buying art because they just have this like connection to whatever it is they're looking at. They're like, man, that moves me. However it moves you, let it move you. And I always ask people, you know, if that piece sells and you come back tomorrow and you're like, I've thought about it. I love it. I want to get it. And it's sold how is it going to make you feel? Right. Right. So that's right. always like a good way to gauge, like if it's moving you or not. And, and again, there's something to just original art in general. I mean, anybody can go to Hobby Lobby and buy decorative things that go on their wall, but to have something that's one of a kind and somebody's heart and soul poured into it's obvious. Yeah. Now, was there something about the project that surprised you in the end? Um, it surprised me probably how truly how open Oro Hotels was to working with original artists and actually paying them what they're worth. Because again, I worked with a lot of hotel groups and it's all about the bottom line. And you as a purchaser know that it is about the bottom line, but 
what sets it apart is when you're not so concerned about that and you let the artists do their thing and you have original art. I mean, that really did surprise me. I was, I was fully anticipating us getting into this and you and I having to go round and round <laughs> way more than we had to. <laughs> I mean, there, there were conversations, but of course, there had but, to be, there had but to thankfully, be. Yes. There were, there were very few and far between. Yeah. And, um, I was also surprised at how easily it all came together with so many different artists and it was really cool to work on it. And again, I've done this before, but really working side by side with you and the design team and seeing where things were living, what artists are higher price point, what artists are mid lower price point, who can we afford to do a whole grouping of who can we not afford to do that with? Like right. who do we only, who can we only have like one giant piece or like three little tiny pieces? Who are those people? And still figuring out how to get all of these people that you guys selected into the project. Like we didn't have to cut anybody. We were able to get everybody in and fit them in places that really make their work shine. Yeah. Yeah. And that was surprising. Great. Okay. Let's move on. So I, what I'd like to know is how do you find your artists for the gallery? Do you, are there things that you do to find local artists or do they just come to you? So again, we work with local and non-local. We've got some artists that are from all over the country and even a couple international. Um, but we get, ooh, no lie, anywhere between five and eight submissions a week of artists who want to show with us. Um, some of them are an obvious fit. Some of them are an obvious not fit. <laughs> and um, a lot of times what we'll do, because again, we're a very small space. If you ever get the chance to come and visit the gallery, you'll see, we do not have a lot of storage. <laughs> it's very small. It's an old, uh, it's over hundred years old. It's an old parsonage for the church that's across the street. So it's an old house. And um, we have to make the best use of our space as possible, which I think we do but we're kind of at our cap. Like we really can't bring anybody else on unless somebody's on their way out or somebody isn't, you know, bringing us as much work as they used to or anything like that. Like that's really when we can bring new art in. Um, and usually that's when we see a hole. Like if we have somebody that is doing these really light, fluffy abstracts, and they can't produce anymore because they have a baby and they just aren't really working as much, but we need the work. I'm going to go out and find something that's going to fill that space. And I will go through my uh, emails, my submissions to see if there's anything from folks that have submitted historically that I might want to pull in, or I will look on Instagram. I mean, Instagram has been a great resource for us and finding things that we really love and think are a good fit for our gallery. That's great. I never even thought of an art curator like yourself going onto social media and seeing what's out there in the world and pulling them in. Absolutely. It's kind of hard not to. And <laughs> I mean, social media is such a big part of our lives. And of course, you know, the almighty Facebook gods know my algorithm. <laughs> so <laughs> they know what to show me. Um, and sometimes that's how it, how it goes. Like Nino Uniardi is a new artist that we brought on board a couple of months ago, he's out of Seattle and he's originally, he's born in Indonesia, moved over when he was younger, has been creating in Seattle for years. I found his work just by sheer luck on Instagram. And we were at a place where we really needed abstract work like his. And it just hit home like, like a lightning bolt. Like I was like, yep, that's it. And I looked at his feed and there were multiple pieces that I was like, yep, I could bring that in right now. And I know that I have a client for it. And so I reached out to him and we did a lot of back and forth and we tried to figure out how to get his, you know, giant canvases over here in a cost-effective manner. Um, so he, he actually unstretches all of the pieces he creates, rolls them and ships them in a tube. And then we restretch them when they get here because it's cheaper to ship that way. Well, what is the, what is the current art scene look like in Greenville? And has that scene changed with the pandemic? Hmm. Great question. So Greenville has kind of been known as this art centered community and we have a whole lot of really incredible artists here. I mean, hundreds of really incredible artists. Uh, there are just a few galleries though. So there's 
let's see, Hampton Three, there's Bakova Gallery that just opened and they do some pretty cutting edge cool stuff. There's Mary Prater downtown. And then there are a lot of studio spaces that are open gallery hours, but there aren't a ton of galleries, which is really surprising to be a city that is so art centered. Right. Um, I feel like Greenville is growing in their desire for original art. They're growing in what they're looking for. And I think that there's a lot of education that's been happening in the last few years of what, about what it means to collect art and what that looks like. Um, Greenville really does love Greenville and it loves to support Greenville. And so I think that um, a lot of local folks purchase local art, but it's also important to look outside of that local box too, because it pushes all of our local artists to be better. And so right. that's why we have a mix because you know, we want every, everything to be elevated. We think that this elevated art market is important for people to realize what real art is and what hobby art is. And so that's where we try to kind of draw that line. Right. So this, so if you're like me, um, thanks to this project, I did start my own collection. I, uh, uh, I, I love it. It's hanging in my kitchen and please forgive me. What is his name? Keith Grace. Keith Grace. That's it. <laughs> Keith Grace. I yeah. love it, love the stuff. And he did a flash sale and I saw it pop up on social media. He had these beautiful little canvases for a hundred dollars a piece, which was phenomenal. Yeah, and that's I, really phenomenal. Yeah, I snapped them up and they're hanging in my kitchen. And every time I look at them, I'm like, oh, I need more. If you are a beginner, what's the best way to start? Do you have advice for a newbie collector? Well, find a gallerist or consultant that you trust and work with them to find what is in your price point, what's realistic, what your style is. And most galleries, like even us, like we, of course, go to our core artists first to help find the right thing. But we also have relationships with artists outside of the gallery. So we can help you find exactly what it is you're after. Um, also keeping an eye out for things that really just strike you. Like if it's social media, if it's um, walking down the street and you see somebody's studio space and something really speaks to you, take a look at it, investigate further, see who the artist is. What, are, what is their education? Did they teach themselves or did they go to school? Have they shown in other gallery spaces? That will help you kind of determine what price point you should be looking at. And again, Another really good reason to work with consultants or gallerists like myself is because we can help guide you in that. We can help guide you with, yes, this is worth it, or no, maybe let's look at this artist who is more established in this price point, and um, we can help you from there. But the, the biggest thing is go with your gut. Go with the thing that really makes your heart sing, the thing that you can't live without. Again, if you walk in and it's gone the next day, is it going to make you sad? Right. That's and I will say I will say, uh, let me just put my little input in here. Yeah. Don't be afraid of commissioned art. I know a lot of people are like, there's no point in me looking at it. I cannot afford it. It is way outside my budget. Um, but you, I have learned over the last two years that commissioned art is a, there's a wide range of price points. So don't be intimidated. Yeah. Don't be afraid of it. Go in and find something, start small and um, build up to the big pieces. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great way to start. Like you don't have to break the bank right away. You don't have to come in and say, yeah, I'm going to spend $2,500 to 12,000. You can come in and say, hey, I really love this small paperwork for $125 and I can go get it framed in a standard frame for another maybe 25. Um, that's a good way to start. That's a great way to start. So what kind of art inspires you? Is there something out there that you just really gravitate towards? Oh my gosh. See, this is when I wish we were doing an actual like video of some sort. So I could show you my crazy insane art collection. We will um, do it. We will do one. <laughs> it um, truly it's, it's what I connect with. A lot of it is a lot of, again, I've worked in this industry since I'm 36 now, and I've worked in this industry since graduating college with a couple of breaks here and there. And I have collected from artists that I've worked with personally. I don't, I mean, there may be one or two pieces that I 
are artists that I just, I loved the piece and I didn't really know the artist, but most of the work that I have is artists that I really have a personal connection with. I've represented their work or I've worked with them closely on something. Um, when I first started working in the art world, I was literally in college. I was, <laughs> I was an intern at a gallery in Charlotte. I could not afford anything <laughs> in that gallery. And so what I, what I started doing is asking my artist friends to create little things for me, like a five by five. And that's what I could afford. And half the time I would pay for it, like over a couple of months to make it happen. <laughs> um, and so I have a lot of littles that I've grouped with bigger pieces as I've grown in my art collecting career. I have larger pieces that I've worked around with my little things to kind of create a really funky collection. I've got everything from abstract works to uh, landscapes, to little birdies, to dogs, to three-dimensional sculptural pieces that hang. So I really do have a, a funky little mix <laughs> of work here in the in my house. Well, let's, let's do this again, only we'll do a live video shot and we will tour your house. Sure. I'll have to have some really good notice so it's clean and the dogs <laughs> are everywhere. So what events are coming up for the gallery? What's happening next? So again, monthly, we do an opening. So next month, the first Friday is actually October 1st, and we will be installing that show the Monday prior. Everything releases that following Tuesday, and then we have first Friday where we have our big artist reception. The two artists we're going to be featuring are Laurel Sawicki and Marley Snooman. Laurel does these really incredible clay sculptural pieces. Some hang on the wall, some are freestanding, and they're clay and found object. They're absolutely incredible. I do own one. I, it was one that I try, I try to give art when it comes to the gallery a few days before I scoop it up and take it home if I feel like I can't live without it, just in fairness to our collectors. But this one was one that I unpacked and I said, yeah, I'm packing this right back up and taking it home. Like I couldn't live without it. So Laurel is one I highly recommend collecting as well as Marlies. She is an oil painter who does these really beautiful birds and florals and trees in this really wonderful modern way. The show is called Natural Wonders. So that's going to be this October. And then November, we have Jennifer Biedenbaugh, and she is also a very well-known Greenville artist, and her shows are always stellar, almost sellouts. And then throughout the month of December, every Saturday, we're going to have a new pop-up with an artist or two with giftable size and price work. That's awesome. Yeah. Back in, thank you so much for doing this for me. I cannot wait to come back to the gallery and see what you've got going on over there. Of course, this was so much fun. And like we talked about earlier, we need to get a drink and just hang out and have girl talk. Let's do it. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Sharon. This was wonderful. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.